our next presenter. Uh, Svetan Usanov started uh, by building a radio when he was 12 and, and got the, uh, the bug for technology and has been doing amazing things ever since. Um, he calls himself uh, Mr. Olimex. And uh, one of the things that I really like about his philosophy is he includes um, open source as part of the development process. So he doesn't wait until uh, the thing is done. He actually involves the people that are most likely to use the products that he's working on. And uh, I agree with him that he ends up getting a lot better products because of it. Uh, please put your hands together and welcome to the stage Svetan Usnav. Hi. My name is Cvetan. Uh, I found an on Olimex in Bulgaria. We are neighbors. And today I will speak about one idea we got recently. Hackers friendly, open source hardware, do-it-yourself, modular laptop. Who am I? Olimex is already 25 years old company. I made it when I graduated technical university in Plovdiv. And since then, we are producing development tools, programmers, uh, different boards, Linux computers, things like this, mostly having fun. We have about 600 different products on our web page, and about half of them are with open source hardware license. Uh, we, we got distributors in many countries. You, see, you can see Mauser, DigiK, all big catalog companies selling our products, which means that even if you open your spe specs and people can study your boards or even produce them, it's still a workable business model and it doesn't uh, prevent to, to do business this way. Okay, why bother? developing open source hardware, do-it-yourself laptop at all. Uh, this is the laptops I used in the years. You can see it's quite a pile of them. You can see here Asus, Bank, Compaq, Toshiba, Sony Vio, Fujitsu Siemens, and they don't work for one or other reason. Sometimes this reason is very small. For instance, the Sony Vio had problems with the charging. One small power supply connector got broken, and since then I cannot use this laptop just because one connector is broken. And it's absolutely non-repairable. Sony made it this way that once you open it, you barely can close it in the same state you, you had when you open it. I opened the laptop to exchange the power supply and I broke those two speakers because they have been assembled in this way that when you open the laptop, they get broken. Uh, this Toshiba you see there, I just drop it on the floor and the display gone. And when I searched the display, it was cost something like half of the price of the new laptop. So. The vendors don't want you to repair the laptops. They, they want you to, to buy a new one. And sometimes very small things make the use of this laptop impossible. And you, you see, with the years, you collect 10 different laptops. You spend a lot of money. And these laptops are mostly in good shape but you cannot use them for some small, small details. For instance, uh, they get new software, needs more powerful processor or more memory, and you cannot change just the, the main board. You have to buy a new laptop. Or the battery, after a few years of use, lost its capacity, and the laptop starts working only 15 or 10 minutes, and the, it, it's no sense to use this laptop, but when you start looking for battery, you cannot find the same model because every different vendor makes different battery pack, incompatible each other. So you have to buy again a new laptop. Or if you just break few keyboard keys, like my son who, who is uh, like to play games, and for for two or three keys you have to 
to, to change the laptop because you cannot exchange them. So, vendors make them hard to repair and they just want you to buy a new one. And I decided this must stop. I cannot, I cannot con continue like this. You, you just waste your money in, on laptops and every couple of years you have to buy a new, new model. Why, why should we do this? And I said, let me check if somebody else already had this idea and made something like this, to not start from the scratch. And I, I googled uh, do-it-yourself laptop, and this is what I found. The pizza box laptop, or this nice wooden laptop. And uh, basically, I cannot use this. I need something, something else. And then I decide, oh, this is mo pro probably m most popular uh, open source laptop, Novena. But as you see, it still doesn't look so good. It's because Bunny, who, who made this laptop, he is a good electronic engineer, but he is not good, obviously, mechanical designer. And uh, he is trying to do everything by himself. So, why not making one laptop ourselves? And I started with the wish list. I, I know that every of you will have a different thoughts, different motives, different uh, preferences, but at least for me, one laptop has to be light because I travel a lot and I don't, I don't need three or four or five kilogram laptop. I, I need something under one kilogram. And I want to use the battery all day long. I want to charge it at night and then whole day to, to run on battery without any problems. And the processor must run all the software I use without delay. I, I, I want to work with this laptop, not just to browse uh, some stuff on the internet. And I want it to be good and stylish because this is something which I will carry with me. It, it cannot be like uh, just secure box or something like this. And of course, I want it to be open source. So if somebody else wants to make something which up to his preferences, to my look at our files, change, modify, and make his own version. And of course, to be modular. Why? Because if this processor got obsolete or I need new power, I want to just replace the motherboard, not the whole uh, plastics and, and everything. It has to be very easy to repair and upgrade. It, it has to be very simple. Even kit has to be able to assemble it. And of course, there, there must be a low cost spare parts. If uh, three keys got broken, I buy just three keys for $3 and replace them. Uh, if the battery goes bad, I just buy a new battery and replace it, not, not throwing away the, the whole laptop. And while I was thinking about this, uh, I thought, why don't we sell it like a kit? So not assemble it, because everybody can buy an assembled laptop from the, any store. It's not fun. But if it's kit form, you can assemble it yourself. This is the educational motive. I, for instance, I have son. I want to build it together with my son to show him how one computer works, what are the components of these computers. And uh, he will know every bit of this computer. He will be not afraid to, if something get, breaks, to open it himself and fix it. Why not? This will. In, probably got many uh, kids interested in electronics and computers and how, how stuff works. And of course, there will be side effect, environmental benefit. You don't throw every couple of year complete device. You, you just replace the part which is broken. And then there is another question. How open will be? Everyone has different concepts about the openness of things. When 
I have seen on the internet long trades, what is open source, why, for instance, Chinese manufacturers, they cannot uh, produce open source processors because the GPU drivers are not open or things like this. And, but I think this is quite silly. This is like to demand what is the chemical composition of the electrolytic capacitor. Why do you need this? Yes, of course, if you know this, it's better, you, you, you get new, new knowledge. But uh, if you can just buy this electrolytic capacitor, why, why do you bother to know what is inside it? Or how the transistors are, for instance, photo-imaged in the, in the microprocessor. You just buy this processor and use it. Of course, the more things are open, it better, but if you have the schematic, you have the CAD files, and you can study, modify, and uh, do this yourself. For me, this is enough to, to name it open source. And then I decide to see what community will think about it. I, I blog about this laptop in November last year, and I got massive feedback. Uh, lot of emails and lot of postings on the blog with very useful information, a uh, lot of tips what could be done better, what could be done. Uh, uh, and this is the power of the open source. Starting from the very beginning, many people think for the open source like a marketing pitch. And they say, yeah, people love open source, and I will say that my project is open source just because more people will get interested about this. And I will open it after my Kickstarter campaign complete or after I sell 10,000 pieces and return the money I invested there. This is totally wrong because the, the major benefit from the open source is that you get the feedback from the very beginning. And this is how we made the motherboard for, for, this pro, for this laptop. What we did so far for four months, we made this board. It's uh, with 64-bit processor, and we made it in KiCad, which is completely open source uh, software. And uh, it, because, uh, it, it may be subject to another talk, but uh, it appears to be one of the most complex boards made with KiCad. And while we designed this board, uh, we, we opened it, the schematic and uh, the board layout and everything at the, at the very beginning. And we got at least pointed, at least four or five mistakes we made because we ha has been hurried to, to make the boards and we forgot some interfaces which for us was not interesting, but other people wanted to use these interfaces. And they say, your board will become better if you expose these interfaces also. So this is how open source works. You get um, expertise for people for something which you might even not consider interesting. But this makes your product better. And uh, in February, there is a false dam in Brussels. This is maybe the biggest event for open source uh, software in, uh, in Europe. And I, I have been there speaking about uh, the KiCad uh, experience while we designed this board. And on the same conference, there was uh, Clifford who, who made a totally open source tool chain for Lattice FPGAs. And basically, I, I, I have learned before about this from Hackaday. They, they posted some, some article about this. But uh, I didn't know how, how, how much was the progress on this project. And when I saw what Clifford made, I said, this is a good add-on for all laptop because it's a complete open source tool chain. We can run on the board and we can uh, make a small board with this FPGA which to attach to the laptop, and this will open a new opportunities uh, for making the laptop like logic analyzer or uh, like digital storage oscilloscope or direct uh, digital synthesizer. 
and uh, this will make this laptop even more hacker friendly because you you get your lap in your laptop. We we got about uh, about the mechanical parts. We we made the progress. We selected plastics, which are nice from manufacturer. Uh, we learned a lot while designing the boards to fit inside the laptop. Uh, we learned for program for problems we didn't know exi they exist. For instance, the laptop LCD appeared to be a, a quite different from the other LCDs because here the connection has to be made with uh, as few wires as possible because the cable uh, goes through the hinge which opens and closes the laptop and the less cables you have there, more reliable is your product. So it, it was new stuff we learned while we, we have been developing this. Of course, the, there was a plenty of uh, other mechanical connectors and things because with the laptop we have only five millimeters uh, highness for the components. So we had to select very carefully all the components which to put inside. So what's next? For the moment, we made first prototype of the A64 uh, board. We made some preliminary Linux support. We know that everything now works as expected. And we start to transfer this board inside the laptop. And I hope uh, in July to have our first working prototype which to show to TuxCon. TuxCon is local Plovdiv conference for open source uh, hardware and software. And uh, it's made uh, by seven enthusiasts. Few of them are somewhere here in, in this room. And uh, on this conference, I, I invited also Edmund uh, Humanberger, who, who is one of the guys who works in this uh, open source tool chain for the FPGA. So, uh, there we'll, we are going to run also some workshops with the FPGAs together with Edmund. Then we have to make some extensive tests to, to see how it works, to, to make improvements on the mechanics, ele electrical parts and things like this. And hopefully we will have a laptop ready by September. As you see, it's a very, very long, almost one year since the initial idea to probably the, the release. And <laughs> when I blocked in November and I start getting every, every week some emails from impatient people that say, hey, I broke my laptop, I want to buy yours. <laughs> when you will release it? And I say, guys, this is just idea. We, we just blocked a couple of weeks ago about it. We cannot complete final products for, for two weeks or something like this. So it, it's a long path. And what we learned so far from this project is that to design something which is uh, so complex mix of electronics but also mechanics is not so easy and takes a lot of more time than we, we, we had expected. And uh, again, we learned that if you want to do something like open source hardware, you have to uh, open everything from the very beginning. Uh, many people are afraid to open their design at the beginning, and they think that if they publish the schematic, immediately some Chinese company or some bad guys will start copy their product, and they will release it before them, and they will not never return the money they put in the design. This is not true. On my blog, I have track back. I, I can see people who, who come to my blog and uh, three years ago when we made the, our first tall winner board with A13, uh, we, we did the same thing. From the very beginning, we published the schematic and everything, and everything was open. And we got, again, a lot of comments and uh, tips and advices. And I, I saw a traffic from a Russian site uh, Russian forum when they are commenting, they say, oh, look, this is very interesting processor. Olimax published the schematic. Uh, why not we make the, the PCV with uh, this? And 
another uh, user said, okay, let them uh, first lay out the PCB white, white to duplicate their work. So what I'm trying to say is that don't worry about this. If, you, if, if somebody knows that you already work on something, they will not copy. <laughs> they will, nobody will be crazy enough to duplicate your work when they know that you are working on it. So you, you don't gain anything if you hide your schematics and if you hide uh, your project until you release it because all the errors which you might oversight or didn't solve or didn't read carefully the data sheets. Uh, for, for A64, for instance, there was a mode for the SD card to work in different voltages, but it was not written in the data sheet, it was nowhere. So we basically put 3.3 volts on the card. And somebody said, yeah, that's, this will work. But if you want really to squeeze the, the speed of the MMC card, you have to provide voltage down to 1.8 volt. And we didn't know this. And now we, we change our schematic, which make different voltages. So our card can be read four times faster than the normal average. And the only our design has this future because all other uh, designers put this 3.3 volts by default. They, like us, didn't know this. But when many people look at your design and everyone has some expertise in his field, he can give you back feedback and to, to tell you how to improve your product and how to make it better. And now I know that our product is better because we open it from the very beginning to many people to see and give us feedback. So, questions? The, the price? Uh, it's still in development, but I guess it will be about 200 euro. And for instance, if you want to make later new motherboard, you will just change motherboard for 30 euro. Not, you will not throw away the complete laptop, which costs 200 euro. So this is the mod modularity and the, uh, the easy upgradable process. RAM memory with uh, eight, with eight sixty-four, we we made uh, experiments and two gigabyte is possible, and works with two gigabyte. Uh, for more, I don't know. Operating system, operating system would be probably Debian. But you can you can make any any Linux distribution you want you want because Debian is our preferences because we know it. But you can make Ubuntu, you can make any any other system you are interested in. Okay. If this is everything, thank you.